Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. I'm Mark Walker and uh, well, we got the second part of our sales video. Now, as you probably know, there's a giant sale on at the moment and lots of people are covering it. Remember, the sale price will reflect which region the sale is available in. If it says NA, then it's not unfortunately on sale in your region. First up then, we've got Two Point Hospital, which is very obviously based on Theme Hospital from the 90s, an absolutely classic game. Now, a few people have complained that it's too similar to that title, but realistically, I mean, that's kind of what they wanted to do. You essentially have an influx of patients at the start of your new hospital, and they have varying conditions that you then have to solve or remedy by installing new machinery. You'll need to undertake lots of different research, of which you can allocate, through which you'll be able to better treat and diagnose the conditions. Now you also hire the staff as well from paying very low prices for uh, not so great staff to expensive but excellent staff members. It's a great game, very, very addictive and well worth the money. Next up, one of the most impressive ports that we've seen on the Nintendo Switch and it's Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. If you're unaware, there is a sequel in the works already, so now's a good time to pick this one up. It's a third person action adventure title. The action, eh, it's okay. The combat in general is just okay, but it's the exploration and really the narrative that drives this one. The developers work closely with institutions and individuals who suffer with split personality disorder to enable them to bring a realistic representation of the struggles that those individuals go through. It's very dark, it's also very slick and runs fantastically on the Switch. Coming in number three, we've got Divinity Original Sin 2. This gigantic title received a glowing review from myself. I compared it to the likes of Baldur's Gate, and in actual fact, it's the same developer that are making the third Baldur's Gate title, which I sincerely hope comes to the Switch. Come on now, that'd be amazing. You'll recruit travelers along your way. You can do things in a variety of different methods. And I joked in the review that one of the ways of getting powerful quickly is to be a little bit more stabby. Um, if that's the way you want to do things. There are lots of difficult moral decisions, and you can have a pet cat or a dog if that's your thing. Very good game indeed. In fact, it's incredible. Go check out the review if you want more info on that one. Then we've got Thronebreaker The Witcher Tale, which was another game I recently reviewed. And again, I think this one got over 90%. Brilliant, such a great adaption. Now it's based around the Gwent game that was first shown in the Witcher series, but they've adapted it to make it a little bit more approachable. And there's also a fully controllable overworld map. So most of your playtime doesn't actually take place from within a Gwent card game. It takes place wandering around, finding new items and training up from within your camp to get new gear, new soldiers, and then upgrade all of those. You play as Meeve, who is queen of Rivia and Lyria, and, well, the story is just so on point. Yes, it's made by many of the writers that worked on The Witcher 3, so you can be assured that there is a fantastic narrative taking place. Absolutely outstanding. Do not let the fact that there's a card game in there put you off. Trust me, it's so good. I'm going to lump the Darksiders together in this, so you can either go for Darksiders, the first one, if you've not played it before. The port is immaculate, it's super slick, I believe there's a performance mode in there as well, and a quality mode. Everything about it is just running slickly. 
They're very similar to actually the core mechanics of a Zelda title, except with a much darker overtone as you play as one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now the second title I actually prefer as a game, but the performance wasn't nearly as good, which actually was the same across the board, so on PlayStation the performance wasn't as good either. I'm not entirely sure whether it was a limitation of increasing the size of the world and making it a bit more, a little more open world, or whether it was just bad optimization. Either way, they're both excellent titles and there's a nice chunky sale going on right now. Then we've got Battle Chasers Night War, which I compared to a Final Fantasy title, especially an early Final Fantasy with turn-based spells, things like that. The visuals on this one are delightful and THQ Nordic did a wonderful job. The narrative's good, there's excellent interaction between the different characters, exposition is well delivered, it just looks like a beautiful visual novel. One slight issue I had with this one was that it gets a touch grindy. In fact, that's an understatement. It gets very grindy towards the end, but still that didn't detract from how much enjoyment I had with it. Very good and well worth picking up on sale. Next up we've got a title which was reviewed by Evan I believe on the channel, lucky son of a gun because it's Atelier Riser. Now this was before I'd played any of the later or the earlier I should say Atelier games, there's over 25 that have been released and this one seemed to do many things really well that the others didn't quite have so coherent. It's got an excellent narrative, the core mechanics of obviously working from within your atelier to do your alchemy have been refined and it's just a very very good game. Evan was impressed with it and if you want to check out his review then go check it out down below. Then there's Everspace, which is my favourite space-based game on the Nintendo Switch. It is a roguelike, but the thing that I really enjoyed about it, other than the amount of polish that's gone into it, is how excellently the narrative works between different runs. So often you'll find every run, ugh, gotta do that again, but here something unlocks that's new and unique every single time, which is what made it stand out from a sea of perhaps less slickly delivered roguelike titles. Now what I will say is that the default controls, they're not great. They really aren't. They should have had motion controls here, but the developers said they couldn't quite get the. Uh, they said they couldn't quite get the data they needed to do it properly. Meh. <clears throat> I'm not sure about that. But either way, when you change to I think it's Control Set Three, it's much much easier to handle the vehicle, and it actually feels really good. Check out my review of that one. But a very good title. I featured this one on so many sales lists, but it's too good not to, so I'm going to do it again. And it's Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Dana. I should imagine we got a load of new subscribers that weren't here for the last time this was on sale, and it's not one to miss. You find yourself shipwrecked on an island, and you have to build up your home base by going out on different ex exhibitions. There's obviously a full RPG here. It's real-time ARPG style combat, so it's an action RPG. There are loads of different customizable outfits and an interesting mechanic whereby you gradually unlock different sections of the island based on the amount of crew that you've managed to recruit. Really a lovely game and well worth having a look at. Last but not least then is a game that many of you won't know, it's Rebel Cops. Somewhere between, I don't know, 
an XCOM and a Commandos, if you know what those games are. There's a lot of strategy here as you play as a rogue band of cops. Perhaps think the A team, but maybe if they're the B team, I don't know. But it's a good game. I quite enjoy this. It's very low priced. If you are a fan of strategy with a bit of action thrown in, then this might be one that would tickle your fancy. It certainly does mine. It's not quite as deep as perhaps it could have been, but still, especially at this much reduced price, I think there's a lot of value to be had here. I'm going to controversially say that one title that you should potentially avoid is Mutant Year Zero just because it's on the Switch. Now, let me just clarify what I mean. It's a great game, it's brilliant, and if you can only play it on one console then yeah, you can still enjoy it on the Switch. Unfortunately, it looks terrible on the Nintendo Switch, like bad, especially, and well, really in handheld mode, it looks shocking. So, you know, if you can get past that, then it's still a good game, I'm not saying it's not, but what I am saying, if you've got any other way of playing this, it's better elsewhere, unfortunately. So that's one, maybe not recommendation to avoid, but just buy it somewhere else. My next absolute avoid like some kind of steaming rat infested carcass is a title called Beast Quest. Now this is based on a very popular set of books but the game is just... <laughs> some of you popped by for a live stream I did a while back and I was playing this and it I think it almost broke the internet because it's so bad. It is shocking. Like no joke the first 10 quests you do are something like I need, I've dropped feathers go and collect these feathers and then the next guy's like, okay, I need 10 apples. Go and collect 10 apples. And the next guy's like, I've, I've, I've lost 10 pieces of stick. Can you get... I couldn't believe it. I literally was messaging Glenn like, this is unreal. So yeah, Beast Quest. Lovely artwork on the eShop. Looks great. And even some of the little images there. You might be fooled into thinking, yes, please. I'll have a bit of Beast Quest. How about no quest? Don't do it to yourself. Trust me. Go for Freedom Finger instead. That's a decent little shooter. Right, a big thanks to all of you who watch the channel. Please... If you're a regular, do hit the, uh, what is it, the little notification bell, because it will tell you when we release videos, and that's good for us, because then hopefully you watch them. And, well, thanks for all of you. I am feeling better, and for all the well wishes down in the comments, that's really cool. What is it I say next? Oh, yes. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!